Well, good morning, Hope City Church. It's me, Pastor Jim. Today is the second day of August. Wow. And today, uh, Lord willing, if everything still goes as planned, I'll be seeing a number of you over at the church. We're going to be doing our first service today since um, we stopped on uh, with the, the uh, coronavirus pandemic. Uh, on uh, Our last service was on March 8th. Of, of this year so we've been a few months away and but God is blessed and we're going to have a time where we can uh, come together today for a short period of time at 3 p.m. however this message because I'm only going to be speaking for a short time today I wanted to take some time and this is going to be a little longer message than normal but uh, I, I wanted to 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 expand on the message that I'll be sharing today. Now we're gonna go, today's message, we're hopefully gonna go Facebook Live and we also will have a, a uh, condensed version of the message here on our YouTube channel. But let me jump right into it. Let me uh, pray and let's, let's get to the word. <clears throat> let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy that is new every day. Father, I pray for you, your spirit your, to go before us. I pray that your spirit will guide and lead and direct us. I pray that you will um, give us insight to your heart. Father God, I pray that you would uh, erase in us anything that is of ourselves that's not of you, and we will seek you with everything we have. Lord, I thank you for this word. May this word, may you breathe on it. May you affect us in a, in a, in a way that draws us nearer to you, uh, closer to your desire, to your direction. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, so today's word, I, I have the, I've gotten a, a title for this. And many of you who know me know that I'm not a, a man that's big on titles or, or whatever. But the title of today's word is God's wisdom for the current time and I and, I, and it's on today today August 2nd, 2nd 2020 and I believe that it's a word for us today and, and and the reason I title it it's not my wisdom it's not from me I'm gonna do my best just to stand and, and share just what the Word of God says I'm gonna start off with a passage of scripture my wife gave to me uh, a, the few months ago when as the in the middle of the pandemic and she was struggling with trying to find why and and what and and trying to encourage herself and then the Holy Spirit I believe gave her this word and and I believe that it was a word to share at this time it comes from Fro Proverbs chapter 2 and uh, verses 6 through actually uh, 10 um, actually 6 through 11 and I'm gonna have to to uh, to uh, get something to be able to share that with you um, hold on because I in my notes here I I stopped at verse uh, <laughs> verse 10 and I, it needs to go through verse 11 for us to get the whole the the fullness of this passage so Again, I apologize to you, but I, again, I, as I told you before, I don't edit this. It's all my mistakes, are, and uh, and editing faux pas are are in this whole thing. So I want to share this to you from uh, two different versions, uh, and um, oh my gosh. Here's what the scripture says in the King James Version. It says, for the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He stores up wisdom from, for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. He guards the paths of the just and preserves the way of the saints. Then you will understand righteousness and justice, equity and every good path. When wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul, discretion will preserve you understanding will keep you and understanding will keep you to deliver you from the way of evil from the man who speaks perverse things so the first uh, I went I read through verse 12 but I'm gonna uh, just wanted the the, the the just of the the passage really was through verse uh, through verse 11 so again 
and I'm reading from the New Living Translation. I love this translation. And just for clarity's sake, I want you to see this translation. It says, For the Lord grants wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He grants treasures of common sense to the honest. He is a shield to the He's a shield to those who walk with integrity. He guards the paths of the just and protect, protects those who are faithful to him. Then you will understand what is just, right, and fair, and you will find the right way to go. For wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will fill you with joy. Wise choices will watch over you. Understanding will keep you safe. And I love that. And so here's some things that I just wanted to share those in those passages for you. And some key words in the passage, why I'm and where I'm going, and the wisdom from God from this current time. In verse 7 in the New Living Translation, he says, He grants treasure, a treasure of common sense to the honest. Now, many of us know what it's like to be honest. And, I, and you think, well, I'm an honest man. I, I, if I find, if I go to the, the grocery store and, 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 uh, and for some reason I uh, get out and I check my receipt and uh, I wasn't charged for something that I, I should have been charged for, I go back in, I show my receipt and go, man, I, I, you, you didn't charge me for this. I want to make sure you don't cheat yourself. But I believe the honesty in this case, and I know it goes just beyond the way we react in the world, but it's an honesty in our hearts. How honest are you before God in your heart? In other words, are you willing to check everything? You really check the, the depth of your motives for doing things? Man, as I was you know, preparing for this, I began to see things in my heart. Maybe that you know, some of my motives, though things were good, there were there was some, uh, for lack of better words, a little bit of corruption in there. I wanted something for myself, maybe, and not strictly to see, just to see the will of God being met. And so that's the depth of, uh, of honesty. He, I wrote this. <clears throat> um, uh, I, I believe that honest, that honest, I believe the honest are also those who take a good hard look at themselves and compare their walk versus what God says or how God says they should walk. Uh, they are honestly seeking God's pure ways for their life. And looking at yourself in an honest way to see if you fall short of what God wants for your life or what God is saying. And as leaders, as uh, leaders in the spiritual realm was pastors, teachers, uh, all those leaders. If you're a leader for God and God is using you to train up kids, if you're a parent, you need to check what is, if you're honest before God. Honesty to me does this. It checks God out. God said this about the world. Listen to this. And you've heard me, if you've been the, with me ever you may have heard me share this scripture numerous times but it's one that comes back up in my spirit over and over again as I begin to look at myself in Psalms chapter 53 verses 1 and 2 and I'm reading from the New Living Translation it says this God looks down from heaven at the entire human race he looks to see if anyone is truly wise and here's what wisdom is if anyone seeks God but no all have turned away all have become corrupt. No one does good, not a single one. So what he's saying in this passage of scripture, there's no one that, that is, is truly, truly wise uh, who really seeks God. All, we've all sinned, as the scripture says, and fallen short of the glory of God. We've turned away. All have been corrupted in some way. He says no one is perfectly good, not a single one of us. Thank God for the blood of Jesus Christ that covers our, all of our sins. So when I consider what God said in Psalms 53, uh, verse 2 and 3, I take a good hard look at myself, and so should you. I want to see if I desire to seek after his will and his way with all my heart. And I hope that you do. Here's what the scripture is saying back in, in Proverbs 2, 6. Those are the ones that are honest and faithful to God. He says they're going to tr try their best to have understanding 
and and to to do what is right and fair and it's and only when you walk in those ways only when you walk in those ways in verse 7 it says this he grants a treasure of common sense to those who are honest and he's a shield to those who walk with integrity those those who check their own hearts to see if they're walking in the right way to see if they're doing the right thing he's a, a shield to those and, th- and if you're doing that, if you're seeking God, God, I want my way out of my will, my way out of the way. Show me what you want. Help me to do those things. And then it says in verse nine of Proverbs two, then you will understand what is right and just. What is right? I'm sorry. Just and fair. And you will find the right way to go. If, if that's your heart, then God's going to give you the right way to go. And he says, and how are we going to know the right way to go? Verse 10 says, for wisdom will enter your heart and knowledge will fill you with joy. You're going to love walking in God. That's how it's going to come to you. So I wanted to start off with the wisdom for this current time is one. We, you and I have to look inside and change our hearts and what we are doing. Like I said before, I'm not saying that I've reached perfection in this. All I know is that I was seeking God and my wife was seeking God with all of her heart. And even if it was just a a moment of time, a snapshot of time, God was faithful in that snapshot of time. And he gave, led her to that passage and that passage really affected me. So here's uh, the next thing I wanna share. Um, what, What the basis of uh, of the knowledge that God gave to me because from that passage of scriptures I was seeking him he he began to to just to pour out from him from his word not from mine what you and I ought to be doing here's what he said in in Matthew chapter 22 what's the basis of all the things that God is 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 teaching us and telling us the the basic check mark the basic thing that you and I ought to check and make sure our heart's in the right place. In Matthew 22, Jesus was was ministering to a group of people and all of a sudden out of that group of people, this this, uh, law, this expert of religious law, of the commandments and of the religious law came to him and really tried to test him as the King James Version says and and the New Living Translation that I'm going to read from, it says it tried, tried to trap him. Listen to what it said. In verse, oh, so Matthew chapter 22, verse 25, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation. It says, one of them, an expert of the religious law, tried to trap him with this question. Teacher, which is the most important commandment of the law of Moses? Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. The second one is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. See, the key word is here in that passage. The key word is to, is love. One, love God first of everything. And then if you truly love God, you will follow his command to love your neighbor. You love God and love your neighbor above everything. See, what happens, and even in the church right now, there's this thing where we, we say we love God but we fail in loving our neighbor. Now, loving our neighbor doesn't mean that we're gonna, you know, I'm only gonna love you if y- you, you love me back. I'm only gonna love you if you're serving God. I'm only gonna love you if you're believing as I'm believing. No, I'm gonna spend time and, and, and loving you. And I gotta tell you, man, I fall so short. I need to be on my, my knees for those who don't follow God. I, 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 as long as I put it back in his camp and I love right, you know, that's it. I was thinking about examples of certain people that God has given in the word of God to us to show us the examples of love. It was the Apostle Paul. I remember at one point being stoned and beaten in, in, in the book of Acts and, and soldiers from Rome having to pick him up and carry him and lift him above the crowd so they wouldn't beat him. And when he gets to a place of safety, he asks if he can let down and, and, and be turned to that same crowd and give them the word of God. Paul, knowing that death may come upon him, wanted to go before Caesar and minister to him and every king along the way that wanted to hear him. His heart was that they would change to love God. And Paul, not afraid to face death, 
knowing that at the point of death, the, the point when he loses his life, the point when his head was removed from the rest of his body, in an instant, he was going to be with God. He said even death wouldn't stop him from doing what God wanted him to do. Here's some more passages of scriptures on love. I just want to give you, here's the basis of what God is asking us to do in these times right now. If we our hearts adjusted and to God properly, we're going to seek him and we're going to love those around us. And then we're going to ask God how to do it. What does his word say on how to do it? Do you really love God? Do you really love your neighbor? In Matthew 5, verses 44 through 48, the scripture says, and this is Jesus says, talking again to us. He says, but I say to you, Love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and praise, pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you, that you may be sons of your fathers in heaven, for he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good. He sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than the others? Do not even the tax collectors do so. Therefore, you should, therefore, check this out, verse 48. Therefore, you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Talking about our perfect love, perfect love for one another. First Peter 4.8 says this, Above all things, have fervent love for one another. For love will cover a multitude of sins. The Amplified Bible says, says it like this. That was the King James Version. The Amplified Bible, New King James Version. That was the New King James Version, I'm sorry. Here's what the Amplified Bible says. Above all things, have intense and unfailing love for one another. For love covers a multitude of sins. Well, what does that multitude of sins mean? It means forgiveness and disregard of offenses of others. In other words, man, we're, we're living in a time where people are coming against people. I'm living in a time where people are coming against me just because of how they think I stand, of, of the possibilities of how I may stand as being a, a black man, as being a preacher, as being all these things. And people come against me and they'll say bad things and people don't care about me. And God's saying, even in the midst of all that, I want you to do something. I want you to stand in love for them because I do. 